Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. First, a word from our sponsor. The Daily Compliance News for January 12, 2021, the Farewell to Michael Lang edition. We're going to hold that story for our final story and begin with, from uh, sportsillustrated.com, Andrew Jennings, the journalist who exposed the dark corners of the Olympic movement and FIFA died. He was 78. He died from a brief sudden illness. Uh, He actually uh, broke the FIFA scandal. And uh, while he was working for the BBC, I wrote about that in my blog a few years back. So uh, farewell to a uh, great sports journalist, Andrew Jennings, who broke some major corruption stories. Next up from the National Post, a first-time contributor to the Daily Compliance News, which reports that the RCMP, or what we would call the Mounties, incorrectly, say they are looking at possible shady business practices by several Canadian companies operating in parts of Africa, East Europe, and South America. The firms involved are in the mining, infrastructure, aviation, rail, engineering, and tech sectors, which are susceptible to corruption. Um, While all sectors are at risk, these are viewed as higher ones. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see if the RCPM uh, RCMP rather comes up with any evidence of corruption and then it will be prosecuted under the Canadian Anti Corruption Act. Next up from the Wall Street Journal, Risk and Compliance Journal, David Smagala uh, reporting uh, private equity uh, firms, um, or rather the Riverside Compliance Chief, compliance chief sees cybersecurity as an emerging challenge for uh, private equity companies. Private equity companies have to register as investment advisors, and uh, many of those firms had previously left compliance to outside counsel. Uh, Some companies now are bringing that back, and mid-market investor uh, Riverside Company hired Jennifer Boyce as its first chief compliance officer in 2012, and she has overseen this process, and she talks about the the evolving role of chief compliance officer at private equity firms as well as the impact of the pandemic and emerging concerns such as cyber on her work. And finally, we conclude with our uh, lead story or our feature story on Michael Lang. For those of a certain generation, the name Michael Lang will have some familiarity because he was one of four men who put together the original Woodstock show. He was uh, a key figure in this and he uh, passed away. He was one of the creators of the entire festival, and he died of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. He was a baby-faced 24-year-old when he and his partners put this all together. So I often talk about rock and roll singers. Well, today, one of the greatest concerts of all time, and he was one of the organizers and promoters. Farewell to Michael Lang. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.